Okay, let's get something perfectly clear real quick. Most of you are dumb, like very dumb. How many times do you see these rule stories and think, Oh, hey, if he had just followed the rules, he wouldn't have gotten into trouble. That is us, specifically my agency. Every anonymous event has a reason, an explanation, a method to follow. Some may be easy, others might really do you bad just for showing up. Giving you some silly rules to follow that will prolong the suffering before pulling you into some extra dimensional realm to pass a thousand times. So, background, and I'm sure you want to hear it. I can only speak for areas under the jurisdiction of the US, as other countries handle this BS on their own terms. I'm not the CIA, the FBI, or any other three-letter agency. The CIA is mostly concerned with overseas espionage and mobbing around third world countries, while the FBI couldn't tell the difference between their own butt and a hole in the ground. My agency doesn't have an acronym, mostly because our founder was pretty smart and decided that a specific name could be traced, and things found out that don't need to be found out. We are an invite-only organization with a few different branches. We recruit from any source we feel will be beneficial to what we do. So it isn't just the normal fare of tier 1 operators and SF kids. While we do utilize them, we also make use of freelancers to take care of specific threats. As for me, I'm human, female. For the purposes of this document, you may refer to me as Echo which is a throwaway name, just like this account. I've been an investigator for around a decade, and we use sites like this to ascertain the validity of stories, mostly for protection. You see, back in the olden days of the 1700s, our founding fathers started a great nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Obviously, this doesn't include the creatures that we deal with on the regular. We'll call them cryptids, since that's an easy nerd name to focus everything into one group. Cryptids can be just about anything, from classic monsters to buildings infested with rotting biomechanical monsters, or apparitions that drive you mad. Normally, I wouldn't bother to do this, but since the quarantine, things have changed. People aren't distracted by their daily lives as much as they used to be, and we can only stage scandals and divisions so much before. The majority of the population begins to grow numb to everything normal going on in the world. That, and I'm honestly tired of seeing these same mistakes. Take the jobs with rules, for example. It starts off with some rube just out of college with a worthless degree who is now struggling to make any money because art doesn't exactly pay the bills unless you're the new Pablo Picasso. Soon they get desperate, and they start applying to anything they can get their hands on that remotely looks like it will secure the next meal. One day, aha, a job posting pops up. Not on actual vetted job sites like Indeed, but something stupid like Craigslist or Facebook. Are you magically run across a paper flyer that you never noticed before that happens to be sitting I love with you while you sip on a non-fat soy latte that you just bought with the remaining five bucks in your checking account? Security guard needed. Start tonight, forty dollars an hour, no experience needed. If there aren't any red flags in that quoted line right there, you need to go get your head checked or lay off the lattes. No security firm pays 40 bones an hour for a rando off the street with no experience. And I'd be willing to bet my ridiculous government paycheck on it. This also goes for amusement parks, malls, universities, subway systems, the works. You see, I've investigated so many of these facilities over the last 10 years that it feels like the general population should have gotten a hold of things by now. If they had, my agency could go public and you could call us on the phone like a normal person, 
and we would come out and take care of it. Instead of us stumbling onto this crap on Reddit after bodies have started piling up. No, you have to take the hard way and that's fine. Here are a list of rules to follow for you to not get caught up in crap like this. And this isn't all inclusive either, so no one should be all up in my DMs going. But Echo, what about if we're in the middle of the wilderness in West Virginia and we're hearing things? Well, first off, I hope that you brought friends. That way, whatever is trying to hunt you will hopefully pick off your bros one by one while you try to find a way out. There is something that you people need to realize really quick. A forest in the US isn't any less ancient than the forest that you find in Europe or Asia. Things have been out there since before the Native Americans were throwing spears at it, and it will be here after we are long gone. Anyway, on to the rules. Rules for surviving the job 1. If a job posting seems too good to be true, then it probably is. 2. If you can't easily do a web search of the company, it's probably a shell. 3. If it advertises high pay for low skill, it isn't worth it. 4. You aren't equipped to fight whatever you're going to find. 5. The people who hired you know that you're stupid and they will not help you. 6. If you find yourself in this situation, follow the rules to the letter. And 7. If you live and make it out, DM me and never go back there. Rules for surviving the wilderness 1. Don't go into the wilderness. 2. If you do go into the wilderness, take someone with you, preferably multiple people. 3. Don't go more than 2 miles from a main road. Most roads used to be native footpaths who figured out the best way to travel through that area. 4. Research the lore. Most of it is grounded in some measure of truth. 5. Don't go during hot times, Halloween, solstice, the harvest, etc. 6. If a tree starts bleeding, leave the area. Once safe, mark the coordinates and DM me. 7. Most state and national parks are there as a safeguard against a cryptid that we can't dispose of. Follow the rules of the park. 8. If it feels like a gate to hell, it probably is. Don't go through it. I'll add more to these later, but those are the basics for now. Your gut instinct is something that modern society has been trying to dull for a while. That animalistic urgency isn't something to be ignored. If your body and mind are telling you that something is whack, then get out of there. I'm really tired of going to a site just to see the remains of humans sprawled everywhere. After they had passed 10 blood totems, a marsh where animals drowned for eternity. Demonic looking gates and signs that pretty much say, You're gonna die a horrible death if you keep going fam. Common sense is your friend. And now that my little tidbit has been said, I have an investigation to get to. We always have a hidden camera with us, so when I get back, I'll transcribe it here. Yes, my boss is fine with this. He's tired of it too. Agent Echo and Agent Shout arrive on site at 1630, the 22nd of January 20XX, redacted at South Dakota. Echo, Shout, where did this come from? My partner queried. And just go along with it, you goober. Think of it as a training video for morons. Brain is cool with it. I spat back. Contrasting my short platinum hair and equally short stature. Shout wasn't even six feet, with well-combed red hair. He wasn't built like a brick house, as in our profession, it paid more to be able to run than anything else. Hey, most of the time you just can't outmuscle cryptids. So you have to outthink and outsmart them. Brain. His voice rose into pitch as he sounded the word out. Brain was my code name for the boss, a fact which he had just now become privy to. You should be shout. Honestly, you do that a lot. 
ignoring how true his words were, as I tend to get overly excited in certain situations. Uh, I put the truck into gear and drove into the mostly empty parking lot of the museum. I hate museums. People want to collect old stuff and are surprised when it comes with, sometimes deadly strings attached. And we looked up at the two-story building in front of us. It was an old house, one of those Victorian types with the creepy atmosphere, and some local thought it would be a cool museum to renovate. The architecture was pretty neat actually. Atop the entrance sat a hand-painted sign that spoke the name of the museum, mostly displaying things like antebellum antiquities and strange objects from around the state. A job posting had been popping up on Facebook for a while. It would be filled and then about a week later it would be up again. So far, three security guards had been reported missing or in an accident of some kind so we called Wind and decided to check it out. The town was mildly populated, a couple of thousand people at most, and it was as cold as balls outside. To better blend in with the locals, Shout and I moved into a piece of crap apartment in town and bought a raspy old Dodge truck to showcase how poor we were. Thankfully, they were happy to sign on two new security guards for the night shift at a ridiculous rate of 43.50 an hour. You remember my rules from earlier? Classic. And we pulled into the parking lot and shut the truck off. From the back of the extended cab, Shao pulled a small case up and into his lab, thumbed the latches and flipped it open. A small laptop sat in the case. Attached via USB was the device, an instrument for measuring levels of redacted. The readout was going ballistic, indicating that cryptids were definitely happening in the area. He shut the laptop and closed the case just as we had a visitor. An old lady somewhere between 95 and 110 years old walked out to greet us, dirty gray and white hair flapping in the freezing wind. She may be topped to five feet in height, and her face was beaten and weathered with scars dotting her mottled flesh. You two were supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. Get inside, she spat, and then turned to walk inside without waiting, muttering something like, freaking kids having no respect, or some other crap like that. Oh, she's a pleasant one. Shout mused as he stepped out. I just followed him and we went inside together. The interior was hot, like ridiculously hot. The type of heat when you take a trip down south in the summer, and it's 120% humidity and makes you feel sticky. The entryway looked pretty normal. Across the threshold, one could see a decent part of the museum just from there. Cabinets were arranged in a pattern that formed a route, where you start at one end and end up in a gift shop full of cheaply made overpriced crab. We bypassed the starting line and went straight to the gift shop, where the old bag was pouring coffee into cups that looked like they hadn't seen a sink or a dishwasher ever. Hopefully it'll last longer than the others. Now that the wind wasn't covering it, her voice was painful to hear, a rasp deeper than Shout's voice ever could be, with the unmistakable sound of smoke damage mixed in. She reeked of uh, cigarettes and alcohol. What happened to the others? Shout asked, leaning on the glass case atop the old woman's desk. She promptly shoved his arm off of it. Oh, this place is filled with things. Things that do things to people and make them do things. Things that people don't normally do. Can you handle it? What? My obvious shock was noted by the woman. Oh, you don't believe me, you little crab. Stay a night here and see how you do. If you live, I'll double your pay. The heck did you just say to me, old lady? My face grew hot. My temper flared and I started over. Shout grabbed me and held me back while the old woman sat there, laughing on one of those sandpaper on metal laughs only lifelong smokers could do. You got fire and good, you'll need it. 
The museum closes at five. Make sure you lock up and read the rule book. I'm going home. Fine, get the heck out then. I spat, eager to be done with her. She laughed a little more and grabbed her things. She set a binder on top of the desk without a label on it and patted it, staring right into Shout's eyes. You could come with me, kiddo. We'll take a dip in my hot tub together. The amount of sultry she tried to put into her voice was painful to hear. Uh, we will, uh, I can't, you gotta know, get to the job and stuff, right? The woman laughed again and laughed her straight away. I broke out into fits of uncontrollable laughter while Shao began dry heaving into the half full trash can to the side of the desk. He was popular with the ladies, especially the older ones. Unlucky for them, he wasn't interested in them at all, so no one had a chance. Alright, let's get to these rules. Hope this isn't complicated. I really don't want to deal with this crap tonight. Shout busied himself while looking over pictures on the desk. Huh, check this out. I peeked over here. A row of photos sat against the back wall. They went from old to new and each one of them had multiple people in it. One thing stuck out. There was one person who was in all of the pictures. Young, not terribly pretty but enough to attract attention. A life stealer, he asked. Probably. It explains why the guards went missing and why she needs someone pretty quick. Okay, you should know the drill by now, dude. How much time do we have? Fifteen minutes, give or take. He responded as I opened the manual, checking inside for a slip of paper. Oh, here we go. Usually, jobs like this don't publish their own rules because that would indicate knowledge of the paranormal happenings. Usually, they jot them down on notebook paper and cram it somewhere obvious so they don't lose too many too soon. Rules for the Redacted Museum Failure to follow these rules may result in injury or death. 1. Your shift starts exactly at 5 p.m. Be in the museum before then. If you drive up to the museum after this time, turn around and go home. Do not be outside of the museum grounds after this time. 2. 5 p.m. to 5.30. Use this time to lock things up. Every door, every window must be closed and locked securely. Do not go into the attic except during the times outlined in these rules. 3. 5.30 to 5.31 The attic houses and old wedding dress. Once 5.30 hits, the door to the case will open and will remain open for one minute. Before it closes, you must walk up the stairs and knock on the door. The door to the attic will open for you. Walk inside, face the dress and curtsy. Say, Good evening, ma'am. We'll take care of you tonight. Close the door for the dress. If you reach the attic and the door and the case is closed, you can try to run if you want. 4. After this, walk around the museum from the start of the exhibits to the end. Read everything, as if you were a tourist. The exhibits like when they are paid attention. 5. During your tour, you may encounter screams and crying. You may see things in your peripheral. Do not attempt to look for the source of the screams or at anything in your peripheral vision. 6. The exhibits may change, displaying truly frightening scenes that may involve family members. Do not enter the exhibits unless you want to become a part of it. 7. Near the end of the tour before you exit to the gift shop, you must turn and bow and say, Thank you for the lovely time. It doesn't matter what you see, you must still thank the exhibits. 8. When you exit to the gift shop, you will see a grotesque young man sitting at the desk. Buy something. It doesn't matter what it is and accept the receipt. Your purchase will be refunded to you in the morning. Do not look at the receipt. 9. 
After the tour, you must complete a walkthrough of the museum every hour. You may hear knocking at the door or the windows. Do not open or look out at them. 10. Do not answer the phone. Well, that's pretty mundane. I mused, looking over to shout. He checked his watch and looked back up. Time to say hey to the dress. You got the stuff? I patted a small bag that I passed off as a purse, and we walked upstairs to the attic. I knocked on the door and we waited for a half a second and then it opened, showing a lovely white wedding dress in an open case. It was very old, maybe the turn of the 19th century, frilly and tiny. This was most likely the course of the power the lady had, used in tandem with some kind of old magic or curse to steal the life force of others and prolong her life. We followed the rule that made a curtsy, telling the dress that we would take care of it tonight, and shout to close the case. Downstairs, we began our tour of the museum like a tourist would. The exhibits actually weren't too numerous, but the rules hadn't in line when it said they might show us some messed up stuff. Really bad stuff that I don't want to repeat, and it ran the gamut. Shot was still relatively new to this whole thing, so I pulled an air sickness bag from my purse and handed it to him right before he chucked his guts up. I've seen plenty of stuff like what we saw, I'm kind of jaded now, which really is the sad part. We continued through the museum at a leisurely pace, stopping to look at each grotesque scene shown to us. At the end, we turned and thanked the exhibits for a good time. The creatures that had been at our peripheral were suddenly in front of us watching, growling with mouths in places that they shouldn't be, making sounds that shouldn't be heard by mortals. Shout was pale and I went tense. Eldritch abominations were the worst to me, and this museum was full of them. I couldn't wait to be free of this place. They were there waiting for us to mess up. One infraction would be our demise. We turned and exited the gift shop, Picked out two candies and paid for them individually, keeping the receipts. The lights dimmed and the grotesque kid had disappeared. Hey, Echo, what causes the stuff to appear here? Shout spoke while I was busy rummaging through books to find these secret diaries that these people inevitably kept. I was halfway inside of a deep bookshelf when he asked, um, think of the world as, um, a flat plane. Flat Earth theory except interdimensional instead of real space. Humans can't really perceive it too much since our telepathic ability is almost nil. But that is also what kind of protects us. Creatures from different planes feed on energy created from mental stimulation, like psychic food, and to powerful enough sources like blood in the water. Emotions serve as a conduit. That's why a lot of possessed objects were the possessions of someone whose emotion was so strong it created a beacon for something. Demons are the most common because they can possess smaller objects easier, kind of like that dress. They can feed and regulate themselves to do what they want to do. Eldritch creatures are in turn drawn by a demon was a bigger presence on the psychic plane than any human ever could. I tossed more books off the shelf. So, the things we saw in the museum weren't demons. I thought all of these were. Didn't you pay attention in redacted cores? Eldritch, not real understandable by us, but there are some explanations. Eldritch creatures can only affect our world during times when the barrier is weaker, such as nighttime or during certain psychic extraplanar phases. Phases, like boss fight phases. He arched a brow, taking the diaries that I handed him and placing them on the desk. No, you doof. Kind of like phases of the moon. Our world's psychic manifestation goes through phases as well. These correspond to certain times of the year, such as Halloween, Midsummer, etc., 
That's why you hear of most eldritch activity taking place more at certain times of the year. Demons don't have to worry as much about the barrier, but they still have limitations. Houses like this are dangerous because eventually, so many beings will congregate that it'll weaken the barrier enough for them to get in. Well, good thing we're here. I'd rather sit in a hot tub with the old bath than have to deal with that kind of infestation. Yeah, me too, I replied. The phone began ringing, startling me and making me slam my head against the shelf. I shimmied free of the bookcase and rubbed my head. Neither shout nor I attempted to answer the phone. Rule number 10. I'm going to start reading these. It's time for a museum walk. You take the honors and I'll switch next time. See you in a few, Echo. Shout, be careful. Symptoms are classic, but treat everything like it's your first time. He nodded and walked off leaving me to manually transcribe certain passages into my notebook. Taking pictures would be easier, but if you run the risk of transferring the possession if you photocopy the whole book. Shower returned a while later, and we switched off like this for most of the night. All in all, it was relatively pain-free. Not a bad one to introduce Shout to a rule-based anomalous facility. 7 a.m. came quickly enough, and the old bat seemed astonished that we were still alive. No issues, she quirked a brow. Nah, none at all, I responded. See you back tonight, Shout answered. Yes, ma'am, we will. Rules were simple, museum wasn't too bad. We'll see you tonight. And we walked out, got in the truck, and left. Well, we left, but parked around the corner to see where we could scope the place out with binoculars. Leaving the truck after we saw the woman peer out the door and look around, we quietly made our way back to the museum entrance and looked in. The woman was frantic, going through the diaries that I had left in the desk for her to find. She frantically made her way upstairs as quickly as her stubby old legs would allow. Shout made quick work of picking the lock, and we walked after her. From my jacket pocket, I pulled free a 6R 9mm, already loaded and safety off. We approached the attic door, just as the woman opened the case and gently took the dress out of it, cradling it like a child. Oh, my sweet thing, I'm so glad they didn't hurt you. They know, they know, they saw everything. I don't know how, but... No, no, they'll be back and then we'll take care of us. I interrupted her. I raised my pistol as she turned around. Her mouth opened to speak and I put a bullet right in her. She crumpled to the floor and Shao began dousing lighter fluid on the dress and floor and then lit it all up with a breeze-proof lighter. Matches could be blown out easily. As the dress caught on fire, Unearthly screams that filled the house. Shout and I bolted, running down the stairs and shouldering our way out of the door and into the morning light outside. He caught his breath as I stood, taking his lighter and lighting a cigarette, a habit picked up years ago after my first job. We walked back to the truck and got in. Agent Echo and Agent Shout, stage one complete. Final sweep of site with redacted device will commence after site has been cleared by first responders. Incendiary operations will resume if first responding services are better than adequate and other redacted are detected. End of transcription. Well, there you have it folks. A pretty easy one to deal with. Many specific questions direct them to the comments preferably. And if one of you DMs me any questionable images of your body parts, just know that my agency has more funding than the CIA, the NSA, and FBI combined. And P.S. Tell the FBI I said to suck it.